Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'd like to thank Don and Mark for allowing me to shoot here today at Altrigan Rifle and Pistol Club and also thank you to John and Mark at AB Braithwaite where I picked up the brand new Umarex Glock 17 Gen 5 pellet version which is over here and just f for comparison I also brought with me today the Glock 17 Gen 4 pellet version over here and also the Glock 17 Gen 5.43 cal, which is over here. So I've got Mark over here as well, who's kindly offering to film for me today. And I'm just gonna pass him the camera whilst we do an overview of the gun. So let's quickly just have a look, first of all, at what you get in the box. So first thing I want to comment on is this is actually slightly more expensive than the Gen 4 pellet version, but cheaper than the 0.43 cal. And for something that is slightly more expensive, you would expect to get a really nice block hard case, but you don't, which I was disappointed with, in fairness. Um, this older Gen 4 version pellet comes with a cleaning rod and it also comes with an allen key and in terms of the 0.43 gen 5 version this one also comes with a hard case it doesn't come with a spare mag I, I got that one um, when I bought this off um, Adam Kurt my friend and it comes with in fact uh, a pull through if obviously you're using it for paintballing and you, you get uh, uh, an accident uh, occurring you'll be able to clean it um, instead, this one just comes with, obviously, the instructions and an Allen key. Now, just doing an overview on the gun itself. I mean, first of all, having the, the Gen 4 and comparing the two, you'll notice that there's differences, first off, very obviously, with the grip itself. This one has uh, finger indents, well, not indents, over here, like this. So essentially it facilitates the grip on the Gen 4 and it's also got some really nice stippling. When you look at the Gen 5, it doesn't, there's essentially no finger grooves over here. It's just a smooth, smooth grip, but it's completely stippled all around. Also, it's worth noting from immediate glance that Obviously, the Gen 5's got uh, the, the rounded edges compared to the Gen 4, if you have a look at the comparison over there. And in terms, one of the things that's glaringly different, from my perspective anyway, is the, the dual safety. The Gen 4 has the safety on the trigger and a safety underneath over here at the front. The Gen 5 also has a safety over here and a safety underneath. But I'm saying this because, interestingly enough, the 0.43 cal doesn't have safety at the front. It's just got the safety on the trigger. Um, I'd like to use this as an opportunity to talk about the engineering on each one. I mean, I noticed the, the rattle test, and this is famous, the famous rattle test on these locks. So when you do the rattle test on the Gen 4, you'll notice that there's considerable rattle, which means that it isn't terrific engineering on the slide over here. On the Gen 5 pellet version, slightly less rattle on the slide over here, but this is the definitive well-engineered version, which is the 0.43 cal. When you do the same rattle test, nothing. And then in addition to that, on the magazine release, which is pressing this button over here, the magazine literally springs out <clears throat> and then there's resistance over here for a hard, firm push, which is very authentic to the real, ver the, the, the true, the real version, the real firearm. Also, it's worth pointing out on the 0.43 cal, it's marked as part of the t training, um, the T4E range by Umarex over there. Um, these, on the other hand, are obviously just marked with the specific cows and 
over here, it's worth noting that this one over here is just marked as 177. And you can see very clearly over here on the slide, Gen 5. Now it's worth taking a look at how these are loaded, especially this one. So just very quickly, the Gen 4, when you release the magazine, it comes with four eight-shot drum magazines. Now I've heard mixed stories about this one. I've heard some people say that this one is literally just throwaway. It's just there for travel. Some people say that's designed for the BBs and then these are used for the pellets. Um, I predominantly bought this version for the pellets, so I use these three and I found no problem when I've used this before in the past in terms of using it for the pellets. And obviously, once you load the pellets in there, you have got these nice protrusions over here on the Gen 4, which then allow you to push the pellets in even further into the magazine so that they hold and then load them over here at the top. And then once they're loaded at the top, and obviously on the presumption that there's CO2 over here, load it into, back into the pistol, the magazine, back into the pistol, and uh, you're good to go, providing that the safety is over here, pushed to the left to, to uh, make it, uh, put or put it into fire mode. Just a quick look at the 0.43 cal. This one is essentially spring loaded so essentially you drop down this spring over here you would put your 0.43 rubber balls in there and then load them back up um, and then obviously with the co2 in here load the magazine back in and you're good to go this okay let's talk about this now prior to the shooting this video, I inserted a CO2 um, canister here by first of all pushing this section forward to release this port. Using the Allen key, I rotated this, which lowered this section over here and then allowed me to put in this CO2 canister with a little bit of pell oil and then tightened it back up to pierce the CO2 and now CO2 is primed ready to go and this has got a belt feed of 21 rounds and it's worth showing you how to load this. So the first thing to do is on this side of the magazine, on the right hand side of the magazine, you've got to push this plastic slider inwards and you can even see on, this, on the plastic slider that there's a, a marker for entry for pellet. So you push that in which then allows you to get access to this side of the magazine. And then I've already loaded 20 shots. And what you do is you get your pellets and I'm shooting 1.7 geckos today, flatheads in this 10 meter range. You load your pellet in like this. And then I found, don't, sli don't slide this, uh, f sorry, this belt, this rubber belt upwards. It's easier if you slide it downwards like this, pushing upwards in one direction and downwards in another um, to, to feed the belt downwards like this and it rotates around. That I found that easier. If you try and push it up, what, what I found was it's slightly more difficult. It's easier just, just to feed it down like that and then do two, two pellets at a time. One thing I will say is that this was quite time, well, it was very time consuming loading up 21 pellets into this. And the other thing I'm really mindful of is that this whole clip um, belt is made of rubber, like a hard rubber, but I'm, I'm mindful that it could perish over time. So that's something to keep an eye on. I think, obviously, uh, be mindful that you might have to look after this. And then once you've loaded up your pellets, you push the slider back in this way, like that. And then you get the pistol load it back in and you're good to go. So we're gonna cop the pistol and shoot it off a bag to eliminate shooter error at 10 meters. And then I'm going to load it into the Roni carbine conversion, which is over here. And I'll show you this in a moment. Um, and we're gonna try shooting five shots from that, for example, just to see how that works. 
So, let's see how this goes. This is the first time I've shot this, by the way. I only picked this up the other day. I haven't even had a chance to shoot it. So, <clears throat> let's just put the gun into... By the way, this, this, this is really difficult. I'm, I'm not a fan of this. I mean, I'm a fan of dual safety, don't get me wrong, but it, ah, again, I'm using a screwdriver just to gently push this and put it into fire mode now. <clears throat> so this is where, thank goodness, for the safety on here too. Okay, so I'm mindful that this has got blowback. I've never shot it before. So let's see how we get on. There's five shots. Again, I've never shot this before, so I'm really mindful about how this is gonna turn out. So, yeah, there you go. Um, there's, there's, there's the five with blowback. Um, not too bad. Um, you can feel that blowback, I'm telling you, when as soon as you, <laughs> you shoot it, uh, I was also really mindful that whether the trigger would be quite heavy. Uh, the the trigger on the Gen 4, because it's helping to rotate the magazine, uh, the drum, is quite heavy. In fairness, the trigger on this one isn't as heavy as I thought it would be. It's, it's, it's heavy, don't get me wrong, but it's not as heavy as I thought it would be. I'm going to try another five shots. This time what I might do is try five shots freestanding just to see how I do. So I missed two, hit the backboard, and two the shooting slightly to the left. Now, let's put the gun in safe and try shooting it through this Roni kit. So I'm just gonna put the gun back in safe now, right? over here. now back in safe and now just very quickly we'll take a look at this which is the Roni pistol carbine conversion for the Glock and this one's designed for airsoft and I've got it primed ready so that we can put the Glock in fairly easily what you do is essentially there's two pins over here one at the rear and one at the front which you have to essentially lift out you extend the um, the, the rear of the rifle back and move this plastic piece backwards. You move this front section forwards by open, uh, as well as opening the grip, which then allows you to open up the housing. Then you take this section, which sits really nicely and comfortably at the rear of the pistol, and it just slides on top. There's grooves in there like that. I don't know if you can see those grooves, and they slide into these grooves over here like this, just making sure that it sits nicely like that. I think that's right. Yep, and then over here, you just slowly pop it in like that, and then close it up. There you go, and then push this back. Push this back like that, put the pins back in, and away you get to go. So again, this piece of plastic stops access to the trigger, so now I've got access to the trigger, 
and now I've got essentially the Umarex Glock 17 Gen 5 housed in this Roni pistol carbine conversion. And over here I've got a choice of either a red dot or a laser. I'll try shooting it with the red dot. And uh, let's see how we get on, just to confirm, is that a new? Actually, do you know what we should do? Just before we do this as well, is put the gun back into uh, fire mode, which is something I forgot to do. <laughs> so we're gonna re, this is actually a part of the video I was gonna show you how to reopen the gun. So what we'll do is just quickly we open this again. We're pushing down on here. Like that. And then that pin needs to come out. There you go. This pin needs to come out. Section goes forward like that. Over here like that. There we go. And enthusiastically, I forgot to put the gun back into fire mode. So I'll just quickly do this now. Okay. And back in it goes. Let's go. Um, let's just bring this one back really quickly. Yeah. Oh. This is one of those episodes of it'll be alright, I don't know. But here we go. There we go. Now I haven't zeroed this, so let's see how this works. It could work, it couldn't work. I don't know, let's find out. Shooting, shooting high maybe. Yeah, shooting slightly high. I mean, to be fair, for the purpose of this video, I don't think I'll have time to uh, re-zero this. But I just wanted to use this as an example to show you that this Roni kit works with the pellet version and what I might do is actually I might center re uh, zero this uh, or even I might get a smaller scope and add this on the Roni kit and then trial it with the Glock just to see how it works but so far let's just pop this out again just to have another look at the Glock Slowly take this off the slide. Actually, what we'll do is just to make sure we'll put this in safe, then we'll take this off, then put it back. See, that's one thing I don't like. I think it's awkward having a, a screwdriver having to do that or long fingernails to basically push back and forth this particular safety. But just one more.
There we go. So what do I think of this compared to the Gen 4? I'll tell you, I like the fact that, let's just open it up. We've got this belt fed magazine, which houses 19 shots. What I don't like about it is that it's made of this rubber and it's time consuming to load. Um, I also, I'm not particularly a fan of this dual safety um, being difficult. I wish there was another way that they could have done this. Um, in terms of authenticity and engineering, it's better in terms of the, the Gen 4. Um, you've just got to hear that when you just do a slight rattle on this compared to this. But the definitive version, I think, so far has to go, and the crown has to go to the Gen 5.43 cal, which, in fairness, you can tell when you hold it compared to the Gen 5 pellet even. It's just, it feels more solid. Um, there's no rattle at all. And when you release the mag, it just, it just pops out. It's gorgeous the way it pops out. It's like spring-loaded, it pops out, and the resistance, and then when you load it back in. It just, it just feels like a Glock should compared to this. That feels a little bit too flimsy in reinserting the magazine and same with this one. And I've noticed as well in terms of the engineering on this, this time at the bottom on the Gen 4, this sometimes just literally pops forward as you eject the magazine. It's even now. So, but there you go. So that brings us to the end of the video on the Glock 5, Glock 17 Gen 5. Uh, hopefully you've liked what you've seen and if you do, please like and subscribe and I'll be back very soon with some more videos. Thank you very much.